this tutorial is in response to a viewer's question. It's something I've done myself in the past. I used to do wedding videos, and this was a technique I used uh, to in, in the wedding videos quite often, something similar to this. Um, the viewers saw it in the background of a Taylor Swift concert. There was a slideshow going on in the background. They were wondering if you could do this with Blender. And in fact, it's, it's quite simple. Basically, we're going to be... Um, in this case, I'm going to make like a table and lay out photos that are animated on the table so it looks like you have moving pictures on it. I've done this past, as I said, in wedding videos. I did one uh, years ago where I did like a bulletin board and I had photos and the wedding invitations pinned to a bulletin board and they were animated. Um, uh, so, and you can also do like a scrapbook. The Taylor Swift one is more like a scrapbook. But let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, first off, I'm running Blender 2.59. And I'm going to delete the default cube. I'm also recording on my laptop, so hopefully everything goes smoothly. Normally I record this on my desktop, but uh, my desktop still have commission, although I did order the new parts for it this morning because I got the reimbursement, the refund. Anyway, uh, first things first, uh, I'm going to set this to 720p. Really, you know, if you're going to go high res, you might want to do 1080, but just for the tutorial, I'm doing 720 just to save on processing power when I render it out. And I'm going to set the frame rate to 30 frames a second. Uh, next, we're going to go up to File, and I'm going to go to User Preferences. I'm going to go to uh, Input, and I'm going to do, enable Continuous Grab, and since I'm working on my laptop, Emulate Number Pad. Then we're going to go to Add-ons, and we're going to do a search for Plane. And you can hear, see here we have Import Images Plane. Now, you can do this manually, but this plugin makes things a lot easier, because, uh, and I believe I've shown it in the past. Um, but basically we'll check that, close this, and then now if we come into our 3D view and hit space and type in plane, you can see import image as plane. And what this will allow us to do is um, import an image as a plane, but normally, you know, you may have created a plane and put a textured image on top of it, but then you need to resize the plane to be the right aspect ratio for uh, the image and it just adds extra steps. So we're using this plugin instead. I'm going to go to where I have the photos saved here, and I'm going to go to um, uh, thumbnail view here, and right here I'm going to choose, basically it's an image I took, a photo I took of my dining room table, at least part of my dining room table, and I have some magazines, comic books, photos, and other things uh, out on the table. I'm going to select import, and then I'm going to scale it up. Now you can see it's got the right aspect ratio for that image. Next I'm going to hit 7. I'm going to hit 5 to go out of uh, perspective mode because when we do a lot of the editing, we don't want to be in perspective mode. We want everything to be flat. But then I'm going to hit 0. To, I'm sorry. Go back 7 on the other pad. Uh, Control alt 0 and we'll move the camera to that top view. I'll hit F12. And as you can see, this is the photo I took. Now, if you're going to be real serious about this, you probably put a little more effort into it. I took this photo in kind of low light, so it's a little grainy. Uh, I did take it at a higher resolution. But, uh, you know, I just took it like that. If you really want to get, uh, you know, more detail, you could uh, put each of these things on their own plane and stack them up, give it a little more 3D feel. But really, I find that that really doesn't give you all that much more. It's a lot more effort. So if you want something based like this, that's the simplest way to do it. Um, if you have a low-resolution camera, you may want to split them into separate planes to get uh, a better quality. But really, lighting makes a big difference. If I took this with better lighting, it probably would have looked better. Anyway, so that's the rendered out. That's what this one plane looks like so far. Next, I'm going to hit spacebar. I'm going to import image as plane again. And we'll look at our thumbnails. And I'm going to choose a video here. I'll choose this uh, one right here. Import planes. There it is. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And then I'm going to hit 3 in the side view. And I'm going to scroll on a little bit. And I'll hit Z to go to wireframe mode. And I'm going to hit G to grab it. And Z for Z ac axis. And I'm going to lift it up just so it's slightly above the other plane, because two planes cannot occupy the same place, same space at the same time, or you're going to get glitches in the rendering. So, And that's just true in real life. Two objects can't occupy the same space. I'm going to go back to camera view here, and we'll render that out, have a quick look at it. So there we go, we have that image, kind of like a photo lying on the table as well. I don't want it right there, centered in the middle though. I'm going to move it off here to the side, and I uh, will guesstimate. See, having all those other images on the one plane, it's kind of hard to know exactly where they are, but I'm going to guess. And I'm just going to rotate that like that.
great. I don't like the angle I rotated to, but uh, the positioning is, is good. Okay, well, hit spacebar again and import a, oh, one more thing to do here. With that image, or with that plane, go to textures, which is already created with the plugin. And what we're gonna do is you can see here that it shows that it's a movie. We're gonna match length of movie. Uh, and we're gonna start the first frame now. Depending on uh, when you want certain things to play in the animation, you may want to start this start, uh, change the start or offset. So like um, if you want, basically later on when we're animating the camera, the camera's going to be zoomed in on this image at a certain time. And if you want it to be showing a certain portion of the animation at that time, you're going to want to use this offset or start just to adjust that properly. But for right now, we're just going to leave that. We're gonna do auto refresh and cycle. And that's it. So now that will animate when we render it out. Now I'm gonna hit spacebar, import images as plane again. Click up here for thumbnails. I'm gonna choose another video right here. Open that as a plane, scale it down, rotate it a little bit. And uh, actually, before we do that, let's uh, control Z to undo that. Um, this is another thing you can do optionally, uh, although I think it adds a little bit depth to the project. Before we lifted uh, this other plane up just slightly above the other plane, there's another way to do that that gives it more of a real image uh, feel to it. When you get uh, photos printed, usually they uh, don't lie flat always on the table. They usually have a little bit of a curve to them. And we're going to uh, create that very simply here. Select the plane, tab into edit mode, Control R for loop cut. I'm going to add five loop cuts in here. Don't need a whole lot. Tab to get out of edit mode. Shift A and we're going to add a lattice. I'm going to scale that lattice up. I'm going to go seven on my number pad to go into top view so we don't have that perspective that the camera has. And I am going to scale this so that it fits right around our plane here. I'm going to go into front view. Um, and scale on the z-axis and just set it around like that. I'll go back into the top view here, going over to our lattice tab here and you have uh, U2, V2, and W2. That's how it is divided up. I'm going to say U2 and make it U3 and you can see it added an extra line down the middle of our lattice here. So at this point we're going to select our plane and then shift select the lattice Control P to parent, but instead of parent object, we're going to parent it to the lattice deform. And now, select lattice, tab into edit mode, box select the middle uh, vertices there. One to go into front view, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab on the z-axis, and as we move that up, you can see it's bending our plane, giving it that curve that a real photo uh, usually has. So at this point, we can tab out of edit mode, choose our plane, go over to modifiers tab, apply the lattice modifier that we've added when we parented it, then we can delete the lattice because we don't need it anymore. And as you can see that pulled it up off of our bottom plane. We can grab it though and on the z-axis move it down just so it, the edges of it are just barely above our plane there. Great. Now if I hit F12 to render this out, you see it's got a curve to it, but it's very blocky. You can see where the, the loop cuts are. We don't want that. Simple fix. We are going to say smooth. Now that it's smooth, we can F12 it, and you can see it's got a nice little smooth um, curve to it. It's got a little bit of shadow under it because it's curved, and we have the lighting over here. So what we can do at this point is rotate it, grab it, move it over here and maybe even scale it down just a little bit. So there we go, we have two new images on our table here, uh, one of which is animated so far. And to animate the other one, same thing, just select it, textured mode, uh, or sorry, texture panel, and um, We're going to say auto refresh and cycle. I'm not sure why it doesn't have match length of video. It should. I wonder if I did something wrong when I imported it. Um, 
Let's hit up arrow here a few times. See, oh, well, the anime. Oh, there we go. Now it appeared when I changed the frames. I don't know why that what that was all about. But we'll match movie length. So that's good. 